lagi Cukulah kau dapatkan diri lebih Buru kaya kapak pundi dulu kumba Syukur lo kumba lagi Cukup juga untuk Five, four, three, two, one Georgia Georgia Yeah, I love that song. What a good song. Also, Georgia is reopening Friday. Bowling alley. You know what, dude? That's the last place I'm going to go. Imagine sticking your three fingers inside those three little holes. Which, Which holes? holes? Oh, the bowling holes. The bowling holes. What are you talking oh. about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. You I was going to fucking shock a fucking Yeah, I thought you were shocking in, a Georgia. A yeah, Georgian. yeah, no, no, no. Uh, what was that they called? The shocker? The shocker. Yeah, the shocker. That was so yeah, college. I know. Yeah, but what is a shocker? Oh, here, I'll show you. Yeah. Uh, two, in, two in the pink, one in the stink. So your pinky goes in the asshole. I learned yeah. different. Right? Could you reverse it? Because Kalila has a big fucking asshole. <laughs> I, I would really? do a reverse shocker with Kalila. Reverse shocker for Kalila. Excuse yeah. you. My <laughs> asshole is frog tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm kidding. Frog fucking tight. So show me how the shocker works. So, so you stick your pinky in the finger, asshole. Two in the vagina. Oh, and two. Then, in the vagina. Can you do three maybe? Oh man, that's a, that's a double yeah, shocker. Dude, uh, uh, Ew, why would you want a straight and, edged um, anything designed this way to go straight into a vagina? No, the you, pinky's still going in the asshole, but then you do an enhanced. Y- you guys are a bunch of virgins. And then what does the thumb do? <laughs> the when thumb, you do a shocker, what the, does the thumb do? The thumb can massage the clitoral area. Oh, you, shit, you that's know, pro. That's pro what you're saying. Gilbert's watched too much VH1. Um, what's that guy on no, there? No, check taxi porn. Mystery. They all. Yeah. You know, maybe yeah. George is not the only incel here. Yeah. <laughs> I love, you know, you know, I love so, a good shocker. All those sexual moves it. I've never done. Have you done you know like those a, little things that they do, like the Dirty Sanchez? I've never done the Dirty Sanchez. Cleveland Steamroller? Which, which one's that? I think you shit on someone's chest. You shit on her chest. chest and you roll on it. Oh, I want to try that. Let's I've try always, I wanna, I've always wanted to try that. But you do so the you, clean up. You can shit uh, yeah. on my chest. I have a very, I have no more titties, so it's very flat and ready for just hot shit. To and my, land my on stool, it. my stool is always kind of wet and acidy. Oh, so perfect. it'll burn a bit. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, like battery alien, acid. It, no, it's like alien blood. Oh, you're, doing the, the you're doing the alien. You're doing <laughs> yeah, the alien. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You're gonna definitely fucking f- feel a sizzle. You'll hear the. <laughs> is it gonna burn off my nipple hairs? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Free waxing. I've, no, yeah. I've never done um, the paranormal activity. That's a good one. Which one is that? I've, t- I've never talked about the paranormal activity one. It might be similar to have. the Houdini, but go ahead. What's the Houdini? Tell me what the Houdini is. The Houdini is you're uh, fucking the girl from behind. You're doing yeah. doggy style. And then yeah. you just tag out with one of your friends who's hiding in the closet. Okay. Then you come it, outside the house and the window that she's facing, you yeah. knock on the window and say hello. Yeah, they, they call that the paranormal, paranormal activity as well. Oh, the ghost yeah, fucking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made Jessica. That one's difficult. I, I think I've said this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I thought that the dirty Sanchez was something else, and I tricked Jessica into doing a sit up into my butthole. Oh uh, wait, hold on. Whoa! All right. Yeah, Filipino style. Because she, she's very competitive with me, so she was like, wow. I told her, I was like, you know that it's not physically um, possible to to do a sit up with your eyes closed. She was like, Oh yeah, bitch, watch this shit. Yeah. And so she did it like really hard too. And then I pulled yeah. my pants down, spread my cheeks, so her nose landed right on my asshole. Mm. Oh. I thought that was a dirty Sanchez. I think we're going back to our old Tiger Belly podcast by talking <laughs> yeah. about this. Stuff. I think we're going yeah. back to MySpace days. Because oh. remember in MySpace, that whole list of like the sex, the, the Cleveland mm-hmm. steamroller, yeah. all of that was like, you know, going around. Yeah, the I just circuit. prefer like Christian style, you know, hole in the sheet. Like a you missionary. Mean, two pumps. Yeah, yeah. You missionary. You know what I mean? Get it I done. Get then, that. then you watch 90 Day Fiance, Fiance. before <laughs> before the 90 days. I, I, you, I'll i be honest with you. I've never seen a show, any kind of reality show before. I don't watch the Kardashians. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything, anything about reality shows. I I just tend to, um, I'm a little bit more, I don't know, You're gonna stubborn. Say, you were going to say What are your artsy? observations? Uh, how do you know I was going to say? I was are you saying? I, you think you're more artsy and sophisticated that garbage TV is beyond, no, is but above now, you. But now... Or you're above it. No, but I'm not. I fucking, I love it. Because I love, it's a train wreck. Mm. Yeah, have you been watching, Gil? I've been watching along with Ed. Only that. The before that's the, the 90 one days. Six, yeah, oh, that's the you, one. you're missing so many good ones. There's a guy named David on it. Okay. Okay. And he's obviously being catfished on this um, Russian... Um, dating site and he only talks to this woman 
on this dating site and he has to pay how much like thousands of dollars. He's, he's already spent like a hundred thousand dollars on this dating site. That's the only place he's talked to her. No number exchange, no address exchange, nothing, no right? nothing. And three times, you know, they had planned to meet mm -hmm. and three times he's, she stood him up over like, a seven year period. Jeez. Right. And now he, 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 Went to the Ukraine. Where is it? Ukraine? Again, he's go he, gone he to, the went Ukraine. Back to the Ukraine, yeah. right? And because he said that she said that she would be at the train station, <laughs> right? <laughs> he shows up yeah. the train station. <laughs> this fool, man, this fool. Then nobody, nobody there. Oh, so God. then she had mentioned that she was from this small town, like seven hours outside of the town that he's in. I don't know. Pavlograd. What, Pavlograd, which is like a kind of close to like the war torn areas of the U of Ukraine. Yeah. Okay. And then he decides to go find her. So he's like, he walks into a candy store and he t t goes to the lady and goes, do you know who this is? Like a photo of her, right? <laughs> that's like, that's literally like, you know, some guy trying to find Kalila, mm -hmm. right? And going, coming to LA and just walking to a Starbucks. Imagine walking to a random Starbucks and just go, hey, you know this fucking, you know, the, mm. the tooch? The, the, the cooch, the tooch. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, what are the odds? Mm. He's never gonna find it. But we're not fully done with it, so I don't want to. You know, maybe he does find her. I don't know. We gotta shout out Ed and Rose. Oh though, my our fucking fave. god! Whenever I see Ed and Rose, I look at Juliana, <laughs> and I look at Juliana, and I go, "Listen, to, look at you. You came to America without fucking a necklace, man. What's a necklace, man? <laughs> a man with no neck." Oh, a neck, <laughs> a necklace. Yeah, a neck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A neck. Oh, necklace. Neck necklace. 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 Man. Neck, yeah, necklace. A man that looks like a human thumb. Yeah. A man, right, who looks like he's in the midst of melting. Mm. He just looks like I'm melting. You know what I mean? And uh, and she came here. This girl, right, yeah. comes here without having to do that, right. Gets an education here mm -hmm. in here in Los Angeles, right, right, and then thirdly, right, she gets a job at Bad Friends, yeah, right, <laughs> Ru Rudy, Rudy, and her attitude couldn't have been worse. In what way? Just stuck up. Oh, she. Oh, in the mornings, I go, "Good morning," you know. I, I make I make sure I go. How did you sleep? You know, did you dream? Yeah. Right. right. She looks at me. Nothing. She never asks me how I'm doing. She doesn't oh. ask me, you know, uh, Uncle Tito, you know what I mean? <laughs> Uncle Tito, how do you feel? You know, mm -hmm. tell me your ideas. What's your past like? Mm. You know, tell me a story. She doesn't ask those things, man. Come on, Rudy. Fucking, you, you're so lucky, lady. You're doing that American rescuer bravado thing that Ed you're right. That's and true. all these other men <laughs> who's are the, doing. Who's the guy that doesn't like the windows being touched? What? What? There's a white guy who also has another Filipina on the I show. I think that that's probably, probably from a different season. season dude. Oh god. Bobby and I hate the guys that go to any of these countries with their American bravado and think that only the women are going are benefiting from their relationship. And now they're worried about if she's just being an opportunist and that they they just want to come to America. And it's like, dude, you went on an international dating site. You didn't date 50-year-old Kathy from San Diego. You mm -hmm. wanted the fantasy of a 23-year-old Filipina yeah. from the slums that you could rescue. Right. Mm -hmm. So you both have dreams. You both have opportunities, except you're the creep. She's just the one who's taking advantage of your creepiness. <laughs> yeah. She, 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 if, if you live, hey, hey, Ed. I mean, you're a nice guy and you're fun to watch. But the thing is, is if you lived in the Philippines, she wouldn't date you. It's it, the fucking, the fucking America is a part of the fucking package. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, that's why she has to fucking suck your twisted dick. And I know it's know. twisted. We don't know if it's twisted. Do we? I mean, all right, you're right. I'm making assumptions. Know. But here's the thing I like about Ed and Rose. <laughs> It might be twisted. It might be twisted. And we, we, yeah, don't yeah, yeah, yeah. we don't know. We don't know. I do think that Ed is a redeemable. Like he is sweet and yes, he, he is, is yeah. trying. Yes. I just don't like it when that other guy, Jeffrey, um, that goes to Russia with Varya or, or or Ed, they throw in the is she just with me for the money? I'm like, Well, what are you in it for? Yeah. 
Mm. You know, Bobby and I hate those scenes when they just go on and on about, like, I'm her ticket to America. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I want to know what her intentions are. You know what I mean? Her intentions is to come to here. Look at you. Look at she you. She has to fuck you. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know necessarily the the convict guy, the the, the drug dealer. What's his name? Jeffrey. He's the one I dislike. I the know, most. but I, he's actually kind of good looking, right? But he still has to know that that's a part of the fucking package, man. You know? Yeah. George looks like a Soviet newscaster. Right now. <laughs> He looks like Sweden, babe. Sweden. The, what, the no, colors. I, the colors. I, I, know he, I know. I was thinking Sweden, but he Mark. looks like some sort of fucking <laughs> communist <laughs> newscaster. Some sort of pro propaganda. Sh yeah. What the fuck are you doing? What are you wearing? I dressed up yeah. for you, Bobby. You know, I thought this is my job. You should dress up. You gotta have some normalcy in these days. Yeah. I had sweatpants on a half an hour ago, but I switched out just for you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how's so? How's it going? Is it? I mean, do you feel fine? Yeah, I'm feeling great. Yeah. I've given up, as you can tell by my power clashing today. You know, it's, <laughs> I've given up. <laughs> you know, um, I got a call, you know, from my my agent saying that I'm not I'm not going to go on the road until 2021. Ooh. Is that for all comics? Yeah. Wow. Their, their, their prediction is, is that really no touring until 2021. And then um, and that I think that was for me. And, and I know we're all suffering, and I'm I'm em empathetic toward everyone's situation, and I'm I'm very blessed, and I'm very lucky, you know, um, very talented. But um, <laughs> but, let's be honest, yeah, you're super talented. Yeah, let's be honest, you're super talented. Yeah, yeah, but uh, no, I'm kidding. Shaka. But but you know, but you know, it was you know, the that was uh, heartbreaking news for me. Mm. That was my you know heartbreaking news. But I know people are struggling out there, and I it's who boo who you know. Yeah, I think that everyone's tired of hearing celebrities say, like, we're all in this together. Because, no, not... I know, I know. We're, we're, we're very much not struggling here. Should we sing yeah, we. Him? Well, I, I can't imagine, yeah. you know. And, you know, I, I mean, I'll be honest. There are thoughts of, like, you know, event, I'm not, I'm not D'Elia. Yeah, you know, I'm not Whit Whitney Cummings. I can't, you know, I'm still one of those comics that eventually here, I'm going to have to work. Yeah. You know, I don't have the kind of savings. You know, I have some, you know, but, you know, I bought this house and, you know, it's it, it gets nerve wracking and scary. But, mm -hmm. you know, I am I know that I'm, I'm very aware and mindful that I'm, you know, I'm blessed. And, um, you know, I just wish that, you know, we all, you know, could get on the same page here. But there are times where I, I open up Twitter and I just start losing my fucking mind. Mm. I just start. I, I really get depressed and angry. You know, so I, I have to be mindful about not using the word mindful all the time. <laughs> 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 because since therapy, I, I don't know if you've noticed, but it's but good, I use though. that fucking word all the fucking time. There's nothing right. wrong with that. But I have to be um, uh, um, I have, aware. No, no, let me just fucking say the word. I'm going to try to come up with a word. Yeah. What would you, you say? Aware. I have to be more aware. In and, the now. And insightful. Mm. Insightful? What else do we have? Yeah, anyway. Um, now for a new segment I like to call, what What kind of video game are you playing? What have you been playing, Gil? I've been playing Warzone, and I just ordered Witcher 3 because I use hard disks. I don't have enough hard disk space. So I've been playing um, probably 8 to 12 hours a day Witcher 3. I hope I like it. It. I'm telling you right now, I love this fucking game. I love games where it's like, you know, because a lot. Of, I'm sorry, I'm just baby. We're it's talking okay. You and Gilb's um, segment. Uh, it's our segment, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I love games where it's like, um, you know, I, I have to find um, a Witcher armor that's like from the school of Wolven, the wolf, <laughs> right? And then it's like you got to find the diagrams, but the only way to find the diagram is to climb this mountain and hunt a fucking cave for three hours. Yeah. And then when you mm -hmm. finally get it, you show up at the blacksmith to get, get it done, and it's almost impossible. You need the eyeball of an ogre. You mm -hmm. need the, the tooth of a sea creature that you can't fucking find. Oh, like the right? ginger root of a Chinaman. So man. you spend like eight yeah. hours trying to f make this fucking armor, and then when you finally have it on, right, you're like... Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll waste the five hours. <laughs> yeah. And then there's this other armor where I want so fucking bad, but there's like a fucking vampire that haunts where the chest is to get the diagram of this armor. 
Yeah. And every time I show up with my sword, I go, I think I'm at the level where I can beat this thing. And I show up with my sword and nope. And I'm dead. Nope. Right? And then I and I'll and then I leave and I go, all right, uh, maybe I'll come back next Friday. Mm. You know what I mean? Maybe I'll be strong enough. But I love games where you have to and then I finally got a house. Oh, that's your favorite. Who do you, you live love in the house with? I had they gave me a butler and some other lady that I don't even know what the lady does. She's but it's a, like you yeah. can put paintings up and stuff. So I'm I've been going to like the market and finding paintings and putting paintings up. <laughs> I, I love little ga- you know, I love games where it's like, oh, you know what? This area is too difficult for me right now. I'm not strong enough. So I'll just go over there and try to, you know, find minerals or not minerals, but like, you know, um, I want make potions and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I love games like that. It's really fun. Kalila, is there a world where you can get into RPGs, role playing games, like ever? No. Yeah, if it was like huh? more, it did. If it didn't involve my hands, I hate the feeling of slippery plastic <laughs> in my hands. And every okay. single time that I've played, because I sweat obviously a lot, it's 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 just I don't like this. I don't like this. If it, she, she, I do like she, the 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 VR stuff. She she, we were playing. I, I was playing Fallout Four once, right? Yeah. In the old house. Uh-huh. And I go, hey, play it, right? It was a dark area where there's ghouls, right? Mm-hmm. And she's kind of, she figured out how to walk around, right? And all of a sudden, you can hear, Rah! but she couldn't see it. It was in back of her, and mm-hmm. she didn't have the control. So she was going, where, where? And then all of a sudden, you could hear, you know, the, the fucking ghoul slashing her back, right? And then she, her hands got so slippery, this, the fucking <laughs> controller just fell on the ground. <laughs> And she said, that's, 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 I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. I feel for you, Kalila, except for the f- <laughs> the sweaty hands. That's exactly what I would do. I hate well, you, you don't like RPGs? He plays I just, Red I'm Dead. not good at them. I hate RPGs because I never, I hate being worse than 13-year-olds at things. Call of Duty, I, I'm that's very competitive. RPG? Okay, uh, well, <laughs> it felt like RPGs were in it, so I thought Role I'd try to put my... No, 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 no. not the missile, my, not the missile role but, playing game. Okay, y- yeah. I don't know yeah. either. George. I'll shut up again for a You're while. PPV. Wait, 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 um, Maybe he's from the Soviet Union. I know he's from the Soviet <laughs> Union. No, what, what, role playing games. You're generally playing by yourself, mm-hmm. and the pacing is where you, you know, how you want it to go. Instead of like, you know, you have to go straight. You can open just world. do whatever you want. So it's open mm-hmm. world. So why would that be difficult? Because when you when you f- f- see a monster that you can't fucking beat, you c- you don't have to do it. You can just walk away mm-hmm. and come back a week later when you feel like you're strong enough. That's what yeah. why you I think you could do it. You fuck. I George think that we been, should. Uh, I think been that doing puzzles. Puzzles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm halfway Wait, through on... another thousand piece puzzle. That's why I had to <laughs> switch rooms because there's a puzzle that's being done on the table I was in before. Sorry to interrupt, but we have this amazing sponsor we want to share with you. Ah, Manscaped. Manscaped is the only device that I use on my precious genitalia. Mm-hmm. I my 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 penile and my the sacks of glory, which we yeah. like, like to call, are the most treasured things in Studio City. <laughs> and and Hollywood, um, it really is. They're very tender s- sacks of beautiful nutrition, and I don't want it. I don't want it to get hurt. So mm. I only use Manscaped because it literally is the only thing that truly works on my um, my privates mm. in terms of um, man grooming. It really is. I use it personally in my life. Um, that's why Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. The Manscaped engineering engineer, engineering team. <laughs> has perfected their third generation trimmer called the Lawnmower 3.0, guys. This Ooh. trimmer features a soft ceramic blade set at the perfect angle to prevent manscaping accidents. Millions of balls are about to be nick free thanks to Manscaped's advanced skin safe technology. One of the coolest features is this LED light, which illuminates grooming areas for a closer and more precise trimming. You can get every last freaking hair off your thick jungle, baby. Tell us more about it, Gilb. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code SLEPT at manscaped.com. Do yourself a favor and always use the right tools for the job. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. And use the code SLEPT. Make sure you tame your jungle. 
Ship Station USA. Hey. It, it's the only thing we use. <laughs> As folks adapt to this changing world, we are all going to be buying more stuff online than ever before. If you're a, a, an e-commerce seller, are you ready to meet the demands of our new delivery culture? Be ready with ShipStation. ShipStation is the fucking product and the uh, and and the company that we use for Tiger Belly merchandise. Tell them more, Kalila. No matter where you're selling, Amazon, Etsy, or your own website, ShipStation brings all of your orders into um, one simple interface, making them really easy to manage from any device, even your cell phone. It all uses all the major carriers like USPS, USPS, FedEx, UPS, and Amazon Fulfillment, guys. So you can compare and choose the best shipping solution for you and your customer. It's the number one choice in online sellers, y'all. You'll ship more in less time with the best rates available. Tell us more about it, Gilb. And right now, Tiger Belly listeners can try ShipStation free for 60 days when you use the offer code BELLY. Make sure your business is ready to meet the demands of delivery. Delivery culture. Get started at ShipStation.com today. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in Belly. That's ShipStation.com. Then offer code Belly. ShipStation.com. Make ship happen. ShipStation USA. Say. Enjoy the rest of the show. Mm. I want to go back to. I want. I actually want to go back to. Um, the 98 day fiance be, you know I want to I want to retract our comments about Ed because I'd love to have him on our show No he's going to do it you fucking melting fuck I love no. him yeah, yeah, yeah I don't care You think you're banking on the fact that you're also from San Diego and he's from San we're, Diego brah, What's up bro he, he's going to do it shaped similarly Yeah we're, sh- we're yeah bro Ed I'm just like you bro I have a neck but I'm just like you <laughs> all right <laughs> You know he has I am, I'm that I'm your type of guy Yeah in terms of like uh, you're a little older Maybe when, when I'm 52, you know what I mean? I'll, I'll do that too, you know? He but, was really cute. But what I want to say is, is that um, when he was in the province with, with Rosemary. In Caloocan. In Caloocan. Where's right? that? It's like close to Manila, but Who, she, cares? Who cares? Yeah. It's in the jungle. <laughs> it's, it's close okay. to Manila. It's yeah. not in the jungles. Manila is not a jungle. Right. But then... Um, and then he was like... Remember, like, he's a, he complaining about everything? The electricity thing? Yeah. No, also it was raining and there's like, is that yeah. leaking? Yeah. Oh, my, oh my God, is that a chicken? You know, or oh my God, look, is that a rat? You know, when he's yeah. and, and Rose is like, I think mouse. I think, yeah, yeah, I <laughs> think it mouse. It looked like yeah, yeah. Master Splinter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah. And um, it's like, I, let me say something, you American fucks. When you're in a situation like that, number one, you know, he was complaining like, um, I've never been in this situation before. I mean, this is difficult for me, right? Mm. You, when I'm in those situations, I go, oh, my God, this is weird. It's a little difficult, but how amazing is it that I'm in this situation, mm-hmm. right? You're living a different life experience. You're a different man than last year. You are so different. No, fuck you. I'm saying that's a good thing. No, fuck you. <laughs> Wait, what? Why are we no, fu- why fuck should you? Be, why is she being fucked? What happened? I'll tell you why. Fuck you, all right? <laughs> I know. You went to Carlos Mencia's. I went to Honduras. Honduras. Right? And I, they had no electricity, no running water. But how old were you? I was 26 years old. Exactly. Mm. 26-year-olds have that. I'll stay in a hostel with 16 people, pay $10 a night, and stink the whole place up, and be merry, and get drunk, and like just have adventure. But you at 48, I've seen you at a five-star hotel in the Philippines. If my option, you, if, he, if I'm in a town, and there's a five-star <laughs> hotel... I'm gonna do that option. Do you know that he? But if there's no other option. Fuck it. At Crimson Hotel in the Philippines. All right. There's a, a downstairs buffet, which is amazing. And that's where people eat in the regular rooms. But if mm-hmm. you have, uh, uh, if you are staying in a fancier room, you have an upstairs buffet. That's has dim sum and all of that, but it's 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 not that like it's better. It's just more private. So all my entire family were downstairs in the regular people's buffet because they all had regular rooms. <laughs> Bobby threw a tantrum because he's like, "I am not eating here. We're going upstairs." No, I mm. li- didn't throw a tantrum. <laughs> what I would do is I would go downstairs because she, you know, she wanted to eat, and I my the whole point was is to look at everyone in the eyes and go. I'm going upstairs. Bye. And they're like, what's upstairs? <laughs> right. And I just love doing that face. Like, Do you remember you- that, George? Oh, I love oh, it. Oh, yeah. I love it. 
And here's a, you, I didn't tell you the reason why I like the crimson. And you, I never told you this, baby. Mm. It's not because it's a five star hotel. It's not because it was like nice. It's because the crimson had private little tiny pools in the back, right? And while you went and did your adventures, just listen to me. I would stand there in the pool and just watch porn and feverishly jerk off in the pool because I could stand and my wa- and the and the water level went up to here and I, and for some reason the feeling of feverishly masturbating uh-huh. right, to pornography and with the water sorry yeah. Jules sorry Jules if you think that this is bad you should have seen me last week on Bad Friends she heard things about me that she fucking her eyes almost popped remember her eyes almost popped out of her little fucking gook head yeah. all right you little gook. Sweetie, um, we have, um, we have we're doing welfare guest. checks. Yeah. We have a welfare, doing welfare Who's checks welfare? on some friends. Who's we'll on welfare? Who, we'll see who it is. It's a surprise. Yeah, who is it? Let's see. Mm, I smell a golden globe. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> shit. I didn't know TV celebrities were going to be on this fucking program today. I don't think he could hear us. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, televisions. Oh, we can't hear him. We can't tell, hear him. DC tell, Jules. If you can't, if you can't hear me right now, I'm gonna. You fuck. You piece of shit. You <laughs> fucking uppity piece. Of, he can't hear me right now, right? No. You uppity piece of shit. Look at that. If you can. So, um, Eric Stone Street. Before I just, you know, you don't have to cut this out, but yeah. um, so they just aired the last um f- season finale. I mean, the the show finale of Modern Family. So we mm-hmm. should yep. congratulation, uh, congratulate him on that. What what a run. What a beautiful run on a show, mm. right? No, yeah. oh yes, I don't know how yeah. many seasons though. And like, number what, two, he's he's a scene stealer. And every since the beginning, he, since the beginning, just crushing it. Scene mm-hmm. steal, scene steal. I remember we've already talked about it probably on this podcast. I forget what I talk about this fuck about, but, but we can uh, remind people. Yeah, but he's a little, you know, as as he gets more successful, this man, he gets a little bit more aggro toward me. <laughs> you know, before we were on even ground, but now um, he's a little, you know, he likes to, you know, look at him. What a cute guy. <laughs> he does Just, look extra cute. He looks cute today. Look oh, at wait, him. Yeah, it's connecting. It's connecting. Is it connecting? Yeah, yeah now I can hear you. Oh, I, don't know what's, I don't know what's <laughs> going on. <laughs> I have millions of dollars. I have no idea what's going on. I can't get my stuff fixed. <laughs> 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 you know, you look at him. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> there it is. <laughs> There's the, the money award. shot. Uh oh. And the award winning cry. And the award winning dick. Is he purposely doing that? Because <laughs> he doesn't want to see me? Shut up. Oh, shit. There he is. There's Mr. Sunshine. What's up, Eric? Oh, God. Stop yelling. Jesus. <laughs> What's happening? Why are you talking so loud? So are I, you- because I couldn't hear you. You couldn't hear me at first. Bobby, are you still in Wuhan? <laughs> You son of a bitch. You know I'm not ching chongy in that way. <laughs> uh, <sighs> <I don't>, uh, <laughs> so, dude, uh, I wanted to say congratulations on um, the, the the show finale. Oh, thanks. Yeah, what a run. Give him a round of applause. What a run on a show, huh? 11 you years. Sa- How many years? 11. I know. Are you sad? Yeah, pretty. It, it all hit me, you know, being locked up and quarantined and all that stuff and all that the emotion of the show ending after 11 years was, was unique and interesting, but um, yeah, I mean, I think I'll be most sad when it's time to go back to work in August when we would all be heading back for our first table read and, and, um, and we're not, we're not doing the show anymore. But you know what, dude, it's like, it's not your last rodeo stone street. No, I know, but still, it's really fun. Yeah, no, I bet. I know, I bet. You know, I. I mean, even though Mad TV didn't have any numbers, right? I, <laughs> were you, uh, even though Mad TV didn't have the numbers, obviously, and wasn't, you right. know, <laughs> what were you saying about Mad yeah. TV? <laughs> it wasn't a hit show that I don't. <laughs> I just can't, but I, I still, um, so Bobby, know, I, see how stupid I look at these glasses. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is how stupid you look in yours. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, you know what? 
What? Uh, can I see this? Is this that you know? I'm trying to develop a new vibe. You know? Well, Bobby. <laughs> yeah. He, uh... Come on, bro. <laughs> yeah, because you were you keep saying you know what I mean for the last couple of months like take the glasses off and what are you doing and all that <laughs> stuff and and I spent so much money on them I just I just need to wear them for a little bit that's all I know I love all your fans on your page defending you being like just let him wear his glasses still so you just leave him alone <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I know I have such good friends you know what's so funny too is is that like. What it drives me crazy is that when I tell a story about us or whatever, yeah. right, the fans want to check with you to see if it's fucking true. Yeah, I got a, t- I got a, te- I got a tweet the other day, like right after you were on some podcast or something, uh, saying Stones or Bobby told a story about you. So of course, I had to go listen and see if it was true or not. Right, and they're ninety percent true, correct? Yeah, I mean, the advantage you have of telling any stories about me is I've probably have forgotten them so <laughs> because I know, I, you know I, know I don't i don't you know you're you're just not that important <laughs> I know, I know. so i know but but you know what the thing is is that you may you know you may have you may say that to get a little chuckle but i think that you are very fond of me i am fond of you but uh, yeah. you know who you know who and i we had a very nice conversation about you uh is howie mandel Oh, I mm. don't you how what a nice man that guy Unbelievable. is. Unbelievable. Oh guy. my god. So funny, so nice, uh, very complimentary of you. Uh we both agreed that you have a huge heart and a tiny penis and <laughs> it was, it was yeah. nice nice to uh to connect on um, on that with with him about you. Yeah, um have I ever sent you a dick pic or no? I've seen it. I know, but because I be you know, late as of late I've been sending people just mm. dick pics. You I know? just don't, man. I don't. I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? I don't want it. It's unwelcomed. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, you you want to say? You, you you want me to say something? I fucking bullshit. This is bullshit because I fucking. I, I may ask you, Kalila, how many Super Bowls have I seen? Zero. Except for what? Uh, the last one. Why? Because of Kansas City. I fucking watched the fucking Super Bowl, you piece of fucking garbage. Because yeah. I know you were all go ho, you know, you know, we're <laughs> champions or whatever, right? So I'm like, and I'm sitting there at Daniel Day Kim's house in Hawaii. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Anyway, you were saying something about being at another Asian's house. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the Asians obviously in this house. We're all 49ers, right? Oh, yeah, of course. Right. Right. Why? Because, because of the, you know. The right, thing. of course. Right, of, of course, course. Of course. And then um, for me, though, I was like, go. I don't know anything about it, but I was like, go <laughs> Kansas City because of my friend Eric, you fucking fuck. I did that because of you. Well, that that's great, but that doesn't mean that I have to accept dick pictures <laughs> in exchange. <laughs> like, we can, we can find a middle ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. You're right. I like didn't for, think that through. Like, for example, this conversation where I say, thank you for supporting the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. Now, you were actually there at the game, correct? Yeah, I was there. I was there, Bobby. Y- yeah, and now when you – because I remember in the game when mm-hmm. you we, San Francisco was winning, right? Mm-hmm. Most of And the you guys game, were yeah. behind. What were you feeling? Uh, you know, I was feeling uh, optimistic, but, you know, they, they're a really good team. So I knew that we would have to do something fairly – fairly impressive to uh, come back and win. And, and at one point I leaned over to Lindsay and I said, if we don't pick this third down up, we're, we're done. And then that's when um, Patrick Mahomes hit Tyreek Hill for 45 yards. Wow. Yeah. I remember that. And then when that happened, cause I can only imagine sitting next to you when that happened, what mm-hmm. were you doing? Screaming? Uh, yeah. I got up and I walked very fast back and forth in a very aggressive way uh, oh that's right because you're in a box probably you're not with the people right god no (laughs) (laughs) yeah you're in some sort of like no i was with i was sitting with the commissioner of football roger goodell actually oh wow (laughs) okay i'll I'll relax (laughs) okay i get it you're fancy all right well no it's not that's not why that's not why i was sitting (laughs) with him i was sitting with him because he had invited me a few years earlier to come to the super bowl to sit with him and his daughters and his wife and I told him no, that I wouldn't come to the Super Bowl until the Chiefs were in it. And mm. then five years, six years later, the Chiefs were in it. And I called him and said, 
Rain check, please. <laughs> yeah, wow. So you're now pacing back and forth, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, you know, you guys start ca ca catching up. What was the well, score then? I, I don't remember, yeah. but you have to understand, I had been through two games where we were behind before, and a couple games with Patrick Mahomes as our quarterback now that feel different when you're behind. It used to not feel like there was any chance we could catch up, but mm. with him as a quarterback, it now feels different. You're, I don't think your followers care about sports. Don't they just no, want no, to make do. fun of you? No, they don't. I, no, I'm, I'm a big Arsenal fan. I, I love sports. You're a big what fan? <laughs> uh, well, the only sport that really matters, Arsenal. Oh, God. Yeah, it's a football <laughs> team out of uh, London. <gasps> so All good. right. You know what so. I mean? We don't take breaks. You know what I mean? Ooh. It's like, uh, let's go do a commercial break while they make some sort of plan. No, soccer, we just keep playing. Okay, Bobby. All right, bud. But anyway. Hey, hey yeah. how many podcasts do you have? I have two. You have this one? I have this one. I do one with the um, freak Andrew Santino. Yeah, what's his deal? What do you mean he's a freak? He's red. Well, why'd you call him a freak? He is a freaky kind of a guy. He's a comic. You know, all comics are kind of freaky. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're freaky yourself. Fuck you. <laughs> I know, but you are. You don't think that you're freaky a little bit? Oh, I'm freaky. Sure. sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. I know you. Oh. What? I just blown still. I haven't l opened my laptop in like a week. Oh, yeah. How's, how is it going now, Eric? I mean, how, what have you been doing uh, during this quarantine? Just been chilling at my house. I mean, I go for an occasional walk, but I don't really, I'm not a big fan of walking. Um, <laughs> go for a drive. I like driving around. Yeah. Um, you know? <laughs> Why is he looking around? <laughs> yeah. So what have you been doing aside from that? What have you been doing just to kill the boredom? Like, what are you, are you watching anything? Are you playing games? What are you, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> what do you mean? Video games are very complex. I play video games all day long. Oh, I know. That's why I said I'm not 10. Uh, <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> you, son of a, you son of a bitch. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> no, I, went, I used to be into video games, and then I got out of them, and then I tried to get back in, and then my assistant, Tyler, talked me out of getting a video game because he's like, you're too old now. It's past your... <laughs> past your time you'll just get frustrated getting beat by younger people so yeah 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 that's true yeah um are you watching anything good yeah i watched did you watch the tiger king thing mm -hmm. oh yeah you like, did you like it you know for me i um i didn't have the kind of reaction that normal people have i was more like you know i mean i, I was interested in the world i love it when um I get to learn about um, a culture that I'm not aware of, right? I just never knew that there was like that kind of those types of people out there. And people then, that take advantage of wild animals and people. Yeah but, not, yeah, but not only that, they're also just these bizarre, eccentric kind of characters that are like almost unbelievable. You know, it's like right. So you even don't, if you, you don't, you don't have a mirror. <laughs> you don't have a mirror then? <laughs> Not a lot of self-reflection going on over there? <laughs> you know what's so funny when you said that? What? My first reaction was rage. Really? Yeah, a little bit was a little bit of a rage. Like, I got defensive, right? Then I, then I found out there, there was humor there, right? And it's out of love, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but the thing mm -hmm. is, is that... Um, you know, I'm not fucking guilty. There's no sound. Really? No sound. Oh my god! Will you tell him that we have to go to Raj or no? Yeah. Can you hear me? Segment. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we can hear yeah. you. Yeah. Good fucking lord. <laughs> Damn. I mean, would well, you, uh, go ahead. Yeah. You don't. Ha you could have just done it this way the whole time. Well, you're yeah, but he said I needed headphones. I'd done freaking Jimmy Kim without headphones, and all of a sudden your production's requiring headphones. So we had to scramble to find headphones, you motherfucker. <laughs> don't you don't, don't come over here into my Zoom room and tell me. <laughs> yeah. I didn't yeah. want to do the fucking headphones, but your all guy, right, right. Why your you fucking guy said, Oh, we need headphones. We need headphones. It was George. Okay, was but George. I want to say this yeah. is that that fucking producer George, I yeah. barely like him. 
Yeah, I remember from the last time you didn't like him at all. I know. Know how dressed so I, up he is. What the fuck is that? Why is he wearing a suit? I, I know. I told him he looked like a fucking um, a Russian newscaster from the 1970s. Hello. Welcome to Tiger Bailey. My name is George. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now, Eric, I want to listen. This week, do you want to do an Instagram live together? Oh, remember when I asked you to do that? Like, I was fucking. You know? Fuck it. Fuck it. I wasn't ready. Okay. I know you were. I wasn't hey, ready. But, real quick, yeah. though. Real quick. Yeah. With the Tiger Belly, with the Tiger King thing, like, the thing that I hope people watched and saw is how those places need to go away. Like, yes. We need to stop, stop that. Yeah. I think that was yeah, the yeah. most painful part for me was not like seeing the reaction of people and sort of praising whoever they liked, whether it was Doc Antle or Joe Exotic or Carol Baskin, whoever they sided with, I think that all those people needed to go. And yeah. the fact that he was being praised for for anything was pissing me off. Yeah, the good news is, is that documentary brought a lot of attention to that world. Yeah. And I think the FDA and Fish and Game and all that is going to get on it and be, you know, once we get past all this stuff, be activated to try to shut some of those places down. But the problem now is there's so many tigers that you're not going to go in there and euthanize a bunch of tigers. They all have to live out their life somewhere. So I don't know what's going to happen. That's why I work with this place you guys would like called White Oak in Jacksonville, Florida. And they I've are seen a true your conservation place. They are oh. truly a conservation place. Okay. Who's Raj? When I was dealing with all these this headphone issue that George created, I yeah. heard you say, should we tell him we got to go to Raj? Who the <laughs> fuck is Raj? Raj. <laughs> Raj. So, <laughs> He doesn't have an Emmy. He doesn't have an Emmy. He doesn't he have an Emmy. So he can wait. No, In fact, no. he was supposed to come before you, but we've had him wait. Since. Yeah, we've had him wait. Roger is Kalila's stepfather. Oh. Yeah, so, you know, he's been kind of waiting. You know what I mean? He was supposed to go on before you, but obviously, you know, we're going to have you on before him. Where's he at? Where's Roger at? He's somewhere. He's, he's waiting somewhere in the... waiting in some, yeah, some lobby. In, um, in Glendale somewhere. Oh. Yeah. But we 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 do um, weekly uh, family welfare checks. Oh, that oh, that's nice. But I, I want I want to, I want to talk about the struggle and 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 celebrity because it's like I I also don't like feeling feeling like guilty about having what I do have because right. I'm well aware that you and I did things and we took risks and we made moves. And we did things that a normal person are too scared to do or whatnot. And we also hung in there for so fucking long mm -hmm. with no pay, rejection after rejection. So it's like there is a point where it's like, all right, I get it. I, I, I guess I am very blessed and lucky, but you also, you know, don't know what I had to do to get to the position that I'm in. Yeah, a couple things there. I don't want to be put in the same category and amount of rejection that you had because you have. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. So if I could just delete. Yeah, we're in different oh, categories. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but you raise a good point, and and uh, like there's a portion of this that you can because that's the thing is is that's why my phrase is do what you can when you can where you can however you can. I mean, yeah. everyone has different means and everyone has different abilities to do stuff. So we all have to, to do what we can when we can. I always say, you know, and I learned that from my, my dad, because I went to college with like poor kids. I went to college with rich kids. I went to college with middle-class kids. And I remember always being so proud of being from a family who, who had means. My dad had means, but he also shared with me, with my brother, with my sister, with the community, with other people, very philanthropic. Mm. And it wasn't until I went to college that I met people who were in all different categories of that. People who couldn't and still did, meaning poor people who just gave whatever extra dollar they had. Then you meet really rich people who don't do shit. Yeah. Yeah. who don't do anything, who don't mm. help their kids, who don't help anyone else. And then you meet the middle class people, middle class, which really was what we were. And my dad, his philosophy was when I make a dollar, that's all of our dollar. That's not 
my dollar. That's not your mom and I's dollar. That's mm. your dollar and our dollar. So that's why I've always felt and had the opinion of, you know, when you can, you do. You have right. to do. Right, yes, okay. Because we're inspired by the people who can't and still do, right? Right. So this week uh, I would love to do an Instagram live, but um, we have to go to Raj because he's old. He's like 90 years old. And so- how old uh, is he? He's like 90 or something. He's in the he's 70s. In, he's in the 70s. And then- well, um, What are we gonna end on? No, we just end on good fucking, good to see you, good luck. <laughs> you know what I mean? You look great, you know what I mean? <laughs> I love you. Congratulations. That kind of stuff. All right. Give me a compliment. I've been okay. giving you so many compliments. Give me a fucking compliment. All right. Um, get closer. <laughs> um, say something so your face pops up because I'm just seeing. Uh, oh. oh, okay. 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 Uh, uh, do you have you have a nice distance between your eyeballs? <laughs> thank you. No. No, thank you. No, that's fine. No, no. Thank you. Thank you. you. My, that's my way of saying <laughs> yeah. Bobby. Yeah. Lila will agree. Yeah. You are very cute. Thank you. That's really nice and genuine. You are very you are an adorable little guy that I just like to put yeah. in my pocket and take. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, also, do you remember though? Uh, Cause I'd said this on this other podcast that that time where I did have that, have that audition and you popped your head in and you gave me advice. Yeah. Do you remember that day? Don't work. Just don't make it. You don't worry about it being perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. I, re okay. I remember you being on Fox. I remember seeing you and stuff like that. But, and I remember what, wonder what you were auditioning for. It was some show that that never really went anywhere. I, I also obviously I didn't get further on the audition, but I remember being really just kind of like just depressed and like kind of was a really bad time. And I was like, and and at the time I would memorize these auditions from beginning to end. And if yeah. it wasn't perfect, yeah, like see, if I fucked up anyway, I started spiraling. You know what I mean? And then what you said really was the best advice I could hear. So well the 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 gist of that and I probably said it then too, which I always felt was important, is if you're memorized and perfect, you've set the expectation for the creators and the producers who are watching you that that's as good as the performance is ever going to be. It's making mistakes and looking down at your paper and them and reminding them that you're auditioning right now. Yeah. And that this is just the, the beginning. And then once you're off book and once you're in wardrobe and once you're on a set, it's going to be even better. But if you go in and you're too perfect and you're too polished and you're too planned out. Planning is different than preparation, right? You prepare right. good, but you don't plan on things. And if you go in and you're too fucking slick, then all you've done is told the producers, this is as good as it's going to be. This is my polished performance. This is what's going to be what I'm going to be doing when it, the cameras are rolling. But you, you want to, you know, you still have to portray the role of actor when you're auditioning. You have yeah. to portray the role of creative person. And I always felt like I don't have time to freaking memorize every line of this because I have two other auditions today, too. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's so the point is, is letting yourself you. off the hook. Thank you. And that really helped. That's all I wanted to fucking say, okay? That Raj doesn't have anything that fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> he, he probably doesn't. All right. Eric, I love you so much. God bless you. And let's do something this week on Instagram Live, okay? Okay, thank you, but you don't say God bless me. Lord, the Lord, may, may the Lord <laughs> no, be with you. No, please, because if anyone is going to have a relationship with the Lord that I trust, that he would like and say, hey, go over and, you know, God bless Stone Street. It ain't you, bro. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I love Bye, you. Bye, Eric. Hey guys, we're taking a quick break to share this amazing sponsor with you. We love sleeping with Brooke Linen. We like sleeping because it's so soft and nice. You guys, Brooke Linen is the only sheets that Kalila and I use at home. It is like we're sleeping on angel skin. Wow. If you're working from home, staying comfortable is the best way to stay productive. And Brooklinen is there for me every part of my daily routine. A good night's sleep is priceless and increasingly harder to come by. So Brooklinen helped me build a bedroom oasis that's, perf that's a perfect place for us to escape. Yeah. 
Tell us like more soft, about it, Gail. Like softness, <laughs> comfort, <laughs> essentials to help you relax. Well, guys, Brooklinen has it all. Brooklinen.com is the perfect place to find all the comforts for home. Yes, sir. And they're so confident in their product that all their sheets, comforters, loungewear, and towels come with a lifetime warranty. Amen. The birthday sale kicks off April 29th, and you don't want to miss it. Get their biggest savings of the year on sheets, bedding, towels, loungewear, and their newest ham and linen can they yeah, collections. Yeah, yeah. If you can't wait, you can get 10% off your first order and free shipping on all their new sheets right now when you use that, the promo code that, tiger only at brooklinen.com right, that right. that's b-r-o-o-k-l-i-n-e-n.com brooklyn and everything you need to live your most comfortable, comfortable life, life. Right. enjoy the rest of the show okay anyway we got um we got a new guest coming on um it's uh kalila's stepfather roger stanman give him a round of applause roger how are you doing I'm doing great. Wow, it's clear. <laughs> so, Roger, I was just th- thinking to myself, from now on, you should keep that fucking beer. You look fucking handsome as fuck, dude. It, it definitely covers up the bad parts. <laughs> <laughs> well, you pot, well, you have pot marks, marks and stuff. No, just oh. the jowls falling down. And the jowls. The, wow. the, the, oh, the jowls. oh, I see. Maybe you're hiding some of the injuries you you got from the Vietnam War. <laughs> it, could, it could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Stan. Yeah. So, yeah. Roger, what have you been doing um, to, to kill time? You know, actually, Martes and I, Kalila's mom, have been getting along so nicely that we take drives, we walk, I walk, she cooks, we watch shows together, we exercise. Wait, I'm doing gardening in the back. Ooh. Nice things. You know okay. what? It's relaxing. I feel sorry for people with children and whatnot. If I had them, I'd be very structured. Um, and I can sort of understand why some of them are going crazy. But, um, you know, it's tough times. It's kind of like a big adventure. Yeah. Now, um, in your professional opinion, um, yeah, in terms of the country and, and the state that we're in, when do you think uh, this, this quarantine is going to end? Actually, based on what I'm hearing, I think a lot of it is going to end by June. Wow. I think the president and a lot of these governors are going to cave in to these moronic people and we're going to have a second wave. And oh. why you're saying it like that? You don't agree? No, I, I, I do. I just, you know, we we try to stay away from um, a point of view on this podcast. But, you know, I tend to. Um, okay. So, yeah, based on what I'm hearing, you, you know, when when we have congressmen that are comparing people that are protesting. To Rosa um, Parks. To comparing it to Rosa Parks. How, how absolutely crazy is this? Something that was so immoral in history back then mm. compared to something that is so moral. Sorry. No, but here's what, when I read that. Roger, by the way, is um, a history teacher. He's a history teacher. So when I read that, you know, when the, uh, I think it was a, maybe a financial advisor out of the White House compare the protesters to Rosa Parks, my first reaction is literal shock that somebody would even say that out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. Secondly, then anger and all those things. But you know what? What I realize is I just kind of have to let it go because I don't want to live in, um, I don't want to live in anger and rage, you know? Oh, I know. And I agree with you. Raj. Um, of all the things, of all the foods that we've sent over to your house, what has been your favorite? Oh, gosh. Kalila, you've sent so many goodies over. The scones. Oh, my gosh. We eat one of those scones at night when we're in a very happy state. Um, um, what kind of happy state, Raj? Oh, whoa. <laughs> no, we're not going to get into that happy state. Okay. Oh, oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are, whoa, whoa. Are you, are you, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I want to ask this. Are you, okay. 
Yeah, look at his face. Are, are you <laughs> being sexually active during this quarantine? That's not that's not what happy state is. Happy state is marijuana. <laughs> my God, why did your head take you there? That's oh, so that's, gross. That's where my, that's uh, Roger, where my don't answer went. that question. Yeah, don't answer that question. Where, Shut the fuck up. It's my podcast too. All right. Please, God, it's my mom though. Uh, it doesn't matter, Roger. It's Roger. Roger. getting no, a I sister. Wanna... It's Kyle getting a brother. Honestly, be honest with me. Are you being sexually active <laughs> during Wait. the quarantine? week but i don't want you guys to feel bad you did it last week six days a week six days a week, six days a week. <laughs> but i don't want you people to feel bad <laughs> so basically the <laughs> questions Kalina. what am i gonna say okay so basically what you're saying is is that you're during the during the quarantine you're you're drilling uh, <laughs> Uh, you, you know, but you yeah. better be careful because you know who will come over there and she'll smack you one. What is your dick? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my mom, uh, my mom, my mom, yeah. Raj. Raj, this is only going to be a quick welfare check segment. Um, it's so good to see your face. Um, I can't wait to hug you and my mom. Um, hopefully in June. Or hopefully, you know, sometime this year. I love you so much. And I'm going to keep sending you scones and portos and goodies and oh, drop off groceries. Oh, good. Yeah, we love you so much. We miss you so much, Raj. And, uh, You're a good man. I got to take Give Ro Roger. Uh, he has a new nickname. Roger Fuck Machine Standman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Raj. We love you. Thanks, Raj. Love you. Bye-bye. Wow. Peace out. Is wow. So, wow, six he's times done. six times a week. That's oh, honestly wow. going to ruin my quarantine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that might have just destroyed me. Well, what do you think that he's a human being, you know? He obviously they're you know I mean, wonderful, but if you know my mom at all, like you know that he's not fucking her. <laughs> She's fucking <laughs> him. <laughs> Yeah. My mom is a muscular. Oh, oh, my yeah. mom is a fuck. She, She's her a beast. body is made of steel. I could just imagine him laying there and then Meredith's climbing on top of him. Oh, God. Just, just hear me out. <laughs> just hear me out, right? I need to hear this. I need and to hear this. It slips in, right? And then she does all the work. Like, pep, 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 pep. But if like, you know my mom at all. Like, oh, oh. Yeah. Like he probably sees the light, you know what I mean? You know my mom, you know she has extreme OCD that she uh, has problems with. So she's one of those people that like counts like how many times she stirs her coffee. So you know when when she's riding, she's counting. She's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> and then like reverse one, two, three, four, five, six. Like a stair yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's 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 a regimented, very structured, very symmetrical, perfectly aligned. Mm. His you calm know, is movement. probably like wood glue. What? <laughs> the strongest kind. You know, you know. have you ever seen wood glue where you try to squirt it out of the bottle and Very it doesn't hard. even come out? because Like yeah. epoxy? So, like epoxy, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love the smell of epoxy. Yeah, it's probably a thick, very thick... Um, substance. Anyway, um, oh my god, this went all wrong. I don't care. How's Jules Quarantine doing? Time, baby. But How's it's Jules my doing? it's my mommy. I'm sorry, you're right. You're I didn't right. help it either. I started talking about the fucking. I know. So he's My getting Lord. high. That's what he meant. Yeah. Yeah, he's well into his 70s. The man can do whatever he, he wants. That's what he wants, you know? Roger's a cool dude. Yeah. So, um, Gilbert, what would you recommend me watching? So, I know because you like to watch things. I was thinking about watching The Ozark. Is that good? Ozark I haven't is good. started that yet, but I will mm. start it. Uh, there's a documentary. I just watched the first episode on HBO. It's the McDonald's one. How the whole. No, I love that one. I've seen the whole. I saw all of them. Oh, my God. I love that agent. He's so Oh, I funny. love him too. He is a great Doug agent. Doug Matthews? Oh. Yeah, yeah. That that whole thing. Yeah, you know what? Watch that documentary and then we'll talk about it next week. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed that documentary. How about you, um, George? Do you have anything to you recommend? Uh, Taskmaster. Oh. What is Anybody that? been watching Taskmaster? Oh, it's is that British like the, on YouTube? It's like the Great British Bake yep, Off. It's all for but... free on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, oh, you know what I've been four watching? Has Noel, Noel Fielding, yeah. I oh, love Noel Fielding. Skin tight. Uh. What's that? The skin tight? 
It's the offshoot um, show of um, 600 pound life where people have now lost, let's say, a total of 300 pounds. And while their lives have changed, they still feel trapped in this body because they have all of this, uh, like just ball of mush of extra skin. Yeah. And then it follows two people per episode who eventually get the, the tummy tuck and the surgery and the wow. skin removal. But what I do is I watch the beginning mm -hmm. and I'll just fast forward. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about what they're feeling. And I just look at the end. Yeah, I like before and afters. I do that with um, meth photos. Like I, I love, did, I like just before and after. Either people on meth and getting sober, or the de de degradation of meth. Like you know, what I mean, meth. Yet yeah, you know, one year meth. You know, mm -hmm. and they're all police photo lineups over the years. Yeah, they should, you should show those pictures on intervention, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah. Anyway, that was a very bizarre podcast. That was a bizarre podcast. Juliana is asleep. Yeah, Juliana is. <laughs> you, you, the people want to see you. <laughs> Just put your face in the camera, real quick. She's she knows asleep. that she's like, asleep, and I want her to wake up. Come here. She's super famous. This is on what bad Juliana friends. looks like. Okay. Just go right here. R right here. Come over here. <laughs> see, there she is. Sleep. <laughs> there she is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's oh taking a nap she on the chair. She's taking a nap right there. Um. Anyway, guys, uh, be safe out there. You know. Really do be safe, and uh, you know, Papa loves you, Slep King loves you, and I and I um I just w want everyone to be uh, healthy. And this, these are tough times. We've never been through a pandemic before, and uh, this is a uh, hundred years from now. This will be in the history books. This will be, you know, talked about. I think, and um, I just think that um, you know, I love you, and I miss everything, and I miss going back to life, and hopefully we can get back to living a regular life. But things I think are going to change in the world I think for the better in many ways um, I think the sea creatures and the animals are coming back out saying hello <laughs> you know it's nice you know what's not gonna change what flower fingers okay okay <laughs> anyway you, oh do we have an unhelpful advice you do would you like it sir yes Unhelpful advice with Bobby and Kalila. Look, babe. I just want to say I'm a huge fan of Aww. Tiger Belly, and I love you all. I'm 23 <laughs> years old, and my younger sister will be 21 in June. In 2016, they cut off my dad from government assistance, and we weren't making rent for months. He began asking for my older brother and I for money to pay the rent, but refused to apply for a job. Eventually, we became fed up and moved out, leaving my sis alone with him. She ran away from home, and my dad was evicted. Fast forward to today, and my dad has a place and a job now. We learned that my sister had been using meth heavily. She has a drug-induced schizophrenia and takes medication for it. She has been in and out of jail for maybe two years now. So apparently a lot of prison inmates have been released because of COVID-19, and so my sister was released. While in jail, she wrote us letters saying she was ready to do better, so my dad let her stay with him. She stayed for three days, went for a walk, and never returned home. She said she was staying with a friend, but we are pretty sure she's staying at a drug house where she has stayed before. This is a dangerous place for her to live. Whenever she lived there, she'd always uh, was covered in bruises and calling us and asking us to send the pictures to the police and the address. What should my dad and I do? We care about her, but this is getting harder on us, especially with the virus going around. We don't know how to facilitate any uh, in, uh, intervention safely. Thanks, Monique. Whoa. You know, um, this is actually a, a kind of identical to something that our family is going through. You know, it's that's okay. that's a real tough one, man. Like um, to to love someone that deeply, but to love them enough to not enable them is a really, really tough position to be in. Mm. I know many people that have gone through this, and it is one of the most difficult things that one can go for it through because you know your f gut instinct is to enable mm -hmm. and to do everything you can because of love to help this person. But you have to understand that, this is tough to say, but this person has to go through living hell before they see the light again. And there's nothing that you can do to save that from them. They have to go through the experience. And this is gonna be tough to say, but at many times, and most of the times, the person doesn't make it. Many times the person dies. Many times they go through it and they see the light, but it's one of those situations where you're completely and utterly powerless. Mm -hmm. There's nothing you can do except do tough love and to um, put up boundaries and not give them money, not 
go out of your way to help them anyway because all that does is prolong their disease and it keeps them out there for longer. So um, that's the only, I mean, I can make a joke about it, but it's not funny. It's like, that's the, that's it. It's proven, it, you know, it, there's programs for pe family members that go through this, you know, it, it, Elanon, it's called codependency. It's, you know, people. Well, that's what you should probably recommend then for her and her dad, right? Yeah, is go through your own program. And even in this, um, even during this pandemic, there are a lot of meetings that you can join um, on Zoom um, that are, are um, available to you all week. And maybe you can find, you can talk about it with other people that are going through something similar. I mean, I know many comedians that, um, I, I, think, I know she talks about it. So Whitney Cummings is one that is um, heavily involved in programs and she um, is very active because, you know, she too has that type of experience. You know, it's not, it's, you're not an anomaly. It's very common. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very painful and we totally see and, and un, you know, and, and empathize with you because especially, I mean, already it's, it's a hard situation as is, but add the extra layer of the fact that like we're worried about this like respiratory disease that's just flying around. Oh my God, you have a double whammy out there. Yeah, it's a double whammy and yeah. that's, that's extra heavy shit for you and your family. I'm so sorry to and carry. very sympathetic toward it. But, you know, there was a time, believe it or not, where I was sober and my brother wasn't. My brother was l hanging out with creatures of the night. <laughs> My brother was hanging out with bottom dwellers and doing drugs and partying with unsavory characters. And every night I used to fucking, just like you probably, worry. But there, and I, you know, there was a point where I would give him drugs. Mm -hmm. I'd go on the road and people would give me drugs and I would put them, you know what I mean, in my, and bring them back to LA and give it to them just so that I could like get them to reach a bottom faster. But, it, what what ended up happening was I felt like that was just did, that was the wrong way of going about it. So I had to let him go. I let him go. And my brother, years later, just called me out of the blue and said, you know, I'm done. I'm going to meetings now. I'm sober. And he's been sober for over 10 years. So um, that's the real only advice that I could give you, my friend. Sorry, we can't. Sorry, right, man. Um, but hey, I love both of you. Um and we'll see each other next week, huh? What do you think? Let's do it. All right, bye. I love you. <laughs> bye. Bye, guys. Love you. Bye. Hello, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that Tiger Belly episode. Thank you to our guest, uh, Eric Stone Street. Very funny. So nice. So awesome. Uh, and also, shout out to Raj. Love that guy. Keep the facial <laughs> hair, dude. And also, big thanks to our sponsors, Manscaped, ShipStation, and Brooklinen. Make sure you tame your jungle. Get 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com with the code SLEPT. And make sure your business is ready to meet the demands of delivery culture. Right now, Tiger Belly listeners can try ShipStation free for 60 days when you go to ShipStation.com and use the offer code BELLY. Get started at ShipStation.com today. Yes. Uh, okay, can was you that a good the radio voice? I think that was a I think that was a pretty good radio voice. Anyways, was, George, get everything you need to live your most comfortable life. For 10% off your first order and free shipping on all the new sheet. Right now you can use promo code Tiger only at Brooklyn.com. Once again, that's the promo code Tiger. But a boom. And who wants to have your question on Tiger Belly? I do, George Kimmel. My Ooh, name is you Jerry do? from Oklahoma. Well, Jerry, you can email us at adviceunhelpful at gmail.com. We're looking for interesting, non-typical problems. If you're thinking of something right now, are you, Jerry? Would you do us a favor and write it down? That's uh, adviceunhelpful at gmail.com. Thank you, Mr. Kimmel. I did write it down. Also, the guys, the meme contest is still going strong. <laughs> Every week, we see amazing memes of the current episode that's out and we usually choose one person from that pool and we give them a gift bag so guys keep making your memes we love it hashtag it tiger belly uh and we will send you those gifts and if you haven't received your gift yet just wait because it's coming anyways you can follow everything tiger belly on instagram at tiger belly on twitter at the tiger belly and you can follow george kimmel at george underscore kimmel and george you can follow bobby lee at bobby lee live and george you can follow kalila at calamity k and George, you can follow me at 
Barack Obama. There it is, at Barack Obama. Wow, getting really Gilded. political. On t- getting really political, George. You know, it's a non-political and, and podcast. Gary Johnson. There you go. Uh, Shout out to Gary Johnson. <laughs> Did he, yeah, he ran, what, like 10 years ago? Anyways. Gary Johnson now knows what Aleppo is. Dot com. Yeah, I don't know what. Check it out, guys. Uh, we love you so much. Thank you for sticking around, and we will see you next week. Put it in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube or on uh, iTunes. Any guests you want to see, let us know. Bye. Yeah. Hey, dude, we're doing Tiger Belly right now, but what's up? I want, I want to talk to you, man. About what? You're special. Yeah, okay. What do you want to talk about? You look handsome right now, by the way. I love the mustache. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, just you're a special man, and I, I want to talk about your special. Okay, well, what do you want to talk about? What do you, specific? I want, know, I want to know what you want to do, and I want to help develop it the visual language of it and make something really special and unique with you yeah and i do too so after the divide well, you want to do a facetime this week and let, we'll do a creative talk yes okay but right now i'm shooting uh, tiger belly so um you, you this is brandon dermer director friend of our, me and andrew santino he did what would diplo do he um he's very talented look oh. at his stuff online oh, well hang on what brandon um bobby was not a fan of the crustless luminatis Really? Well, I just, the crust was the fucking sausage. Yeah, I, we had it last night. It's delicious. I yeah, but I, where's the bread? Well, so what we did was we made that and a cheese and then ate them together. Well, you didn't tell me that. Yeah, that's what you got to do. Well, you didn't tell me that. I just ate the fucking sausage got, and cheese. No, no, no. You need both. Oh, really? My side. Yeah. Okay. So we will talk this week about the visual language. It's, it's fucking art director talk. The visual language of, of, of the special. And uh, we'll get into it. So I'll call you maybe Wednesday and we'll, or Thursday and we'll talk deeply about it, okay? Please, please. Yeah, yeah. I love you so much, Dermer. Okay, we'll talk to you soon, okay? Bye. Bye.